Ah, boost emblems. These confusing, mysterious things that somehow come out of this machine and make life so much better or so much worse, depending on what's going on. Come on, Lugia. Come on, Lugia. Come on, Lugia. Let's go. Dang it. Still no Lugia. In this video, I'm gonna go through all things boost emblems and give you the best emblem setups for every Pokemon inside of Pokemon Unite with huge help from the Unite Math Chord and Unite DB. So whether you've been playing the game for a long time and you have a ton of different emblem setups and some specific for each Pokemon that you like, or if you're just starting out, you're gonna be able to get a lot from this video. I've talked about the basics of emblem collection in previous videos, so this is mainly going to be focused on emblem builds. All right, let's do this thing. Yeehaw. Before we get started with specific Pokemon, let's talk about an emblem set that is essentially the core of all physical attack-based Pokemon inside the game right now, and that is this beautiful emblem set right here. The big thing that changed with a lot of physical attackers in the game is this emblem right here, Ho-Oh. It is extremely valuable, it is white and brown, it gives you three attack and it gives you negative four and a half special attack. It is the perfect emblem for all attack based Pokemon and it allows you to create the most powerful sets for attack based Pokemon alongside Aerodactyl. You kind of need them both to make sure that you can get the six white, six brown, that you're gonna see a lot of Pokemon run inside this meta. The core of this setup looks like this with Ho-Oh and Aerodactyl. You have Nidoqueen right here. All of these Pokemon, as you can see, ha have a negative to special attack except for Aerodactyl. So when you're looking to build your emblems, you want to enhance the things that your Pokemon are good at, oftentimes HP and then their primary stat like special attack or attack. And then you want to lower things that they don't use. If a Pokemon doesn't use critical hits, you lower that. If a Pokemon doesn't use special attack, like all of your attackers, you lower that. So this is the base of what you will see all of your attackers essentially use, except for a few. And we will have some very specific emblem sets for specific Pokemon. So let's start with this set first for attack-based Pokemon that are very tanky. A lot of defenders are going to make great use of this set. As you can see, we've got the white brown from the Ho-Oh and the Aerodactyl. It gives us six white, six brown, and two blue. It uh, focuses on giving us a lot of extra HP. HP is one of the best flat stats that you can get in Pokemon Unite because no matter what kind of damage is hitting you, your HP is going to help with that. It gives you a little extra attack. You lose a little defense, but very, very small amount, and you're also getting this bonus here. You tank special attack. You don't need that, obviously, and this build has a negative critical hit. That is because all of the Pokemon that are going to be using this don't worry about critical hits. So let's talk about what Pokemon take advantage of this tank setup best. Crustle is an extremely tanky Pokemon that can make great use out of this set right here. Extra HP, extra attack for all of its attack based moves. No matter what build you're going with Crustle, this could work pretty well. Unless of course you're playing critical hit Crustle, which is a whole thing all by itself. Greedon also makes great use of a set like this. The tankiness, the extra attack, which does help out a lot with its move belch. And of course, just the fact that you get a little extra move speed and you don't need to worry about critical hits. Although I will say, sometimes I put seven yellow on Greedon and I run into the central area. What can I say? I'm a trickster. Mamoswine does excellent with this build setup right here. Tankiness and lots of attack. Snorlax as well is a great Pokemon for this setup. And we have two more tanks that make great use of this than one Pokemon you might not expect. Another tank would be Trevenant. Trevenant does incredible with this. Trevenant's all about HP and getting some extra attack. So is Umbreon. Umbreon is amazing with this setup and you don't really need much else than these stats for these Pokemon. Again, this white brown build is so, so popular for basically all attack based Pokemon with some variations. A Pokemon that you might not expect makes great use out of this setup is actually a Zoom Azumarill. Azumarill has natural critical hit on all of its moves and attacks as long as it's hitting one enemy Pokemon. So the negative critical hit that you get from this actually doesn't hurt Azumarill at all. Now let's just say for a second you didn't have a few of the emblems we were looking at and you wanted to kind of piece something together here. Here's an idea. Let's just say you didn't have one of the brown white emblem setups, but you could throw on some other Pokemon that work. You could put something like Smeargle in there to give you some extra HP and negative 
negative special attack, obviously. Tauros is another good one. It doesn't give you any extra HP, but it does give you a little more attack. And then you could achieve six white. From here, obviously, if you don't have the two white brown emblems, you can't get six and six, but you can get something that looks like this. You could throw a Polyrath on there, a Slow King, and you could get something that looks like this. Not as ideal as the previous build, but you could see what we're focusing on. We have things that lower special attack and things that focus on our main stats, HP and attack. And of course, with something like this, you don't get the six brown, but you get a couple purple, you get a couple blue. This isn't necessarily perfect. All I'm trying to show you right here is if you don't have a few pieces of a set like this, you could still look for things inside your kit that work. Right here, we're gonna take a look at a very similar setup. This is for more of a bruiser brawler build. You take away the negative critical hit because some of these Pokemon critically hit. You still get a lot of HP, you get some good attack. You lose, again, a little defense, but mostly you're tanking special attack a stat you don't use and you get a little extra move speed i know that from time to time on this aerodactyl i've just run the gold aerodactyl for fun for a little extra move speed even though you do sacrifice some defense for it the math cord recommends the bronze aerodactyl math card there are a whole slew of pokemon that this setup is amazing for again brown white is everything right now didn't you hear buzzwall takes great advantage of this set charizard takes huge advantage of a setup like this dragonite does really well with this extra hp and then of course six brown just helping all of its attacks and dragonite's like getting tons of damage from its basics strangely enough the old chompy boy himself garchomp does very very well with this setup also not to be outdone, Machamp has four arms and also does very, very well with this. It's not to be outdone. Mewtwo X. Oh, Mewtwo X. As if we needed to optimize this Pokemon, this is a great setup for Mewtwo X. Leafeon does very well with this setup. I also like to play Leafeon with a little extra cooldown myself. I think that build is very fun, but this is a solid setup for the Leafy on. Sableye can't really do too much else inside the match. I mean, you could put yellow on Sableye. You could do some weird stuff with this Pokemon, but extra HP and extra attack, which is its stat, works really well. Scissor wants the tankiness. Scissor wants the attack for sure. And so does its buddy, Scyther. Ah, Scissor and Scyther. Together, once again, under one emblem setup. We talked about Trevenant a little earlier, but if you want to play Trevenant a little more aggressive, you could play something like this. This is a little more of a brawling build with Trevenant. If you have to pick Zarina, this is a good emblem setup for Zarina. Sorry, Zarina mains. It's just, it's rough out there. Tyranitar will Tyranna take this emblem setup. Whew. We got there. We got there. It was scary, but we got there. Zacian. Oh, Zacian. You're so mean, and you will enjoy this setup. Now a couple of speedsters to round this thing out. Zara Aura does very well with this setup. Zara Aura is actually tankier than you would expect because of its shield from discharge. And then, of course, Zora Roro Roro Rark does very well with this setup. I have a variation that I could show you for some of the speedsters here in a little bit. I think I said speedsters. For some of the speedsters. Now, this is also a setup that can be used for a few of the Pokemon we just talked about. This setup is a little more focused on dealing damage. It's less sustain focused or less HP focused, I guess I should say, as the previous setup right here. So this one is more about just doing a little extra punch of damage. We were just talking about Zara Aura and Zorororo Arc. Both of these speedsters could actually take great advantage of this. Another speedster that does very well here is Talonflame. Talonflame just gets a little extra HP, but a little extra pop of attack so it can do damage. And we have another Talonflame build I'll talk to you about a little later. Scissor and Scyther could actually both do very well with this. Also, you might want a little extra HP for Scissor, so I would probably go back to the previous build, but Scyther is more about a burst of damage, so you could more reliably go with something like this. Lucario is really all about its attack stat that's why you're stacking on this pokemon all the time so lucario is recommended to run something like this just for that little extra pop of attack now let's talk about some of our adc's attack damage carries cinderace does very very well with this build it doesn't need as much hp as some other pokemon you're playing it at range and you get a lot out of the extra attack 
Another Pokemon that's very similar to Cinderace is Greninja. Greninja does very, very well with a setup like this. Again, focusing more on attack rather than the extra HP from the previous build. Let's bring all these attack damage carries in here because Dragapult does very, very well with this setup also. And so does Duraludon. Duraludon takes great advantage of the extra attack that this specific setup gives you. And don't think I forgot about Decidueye, because Decidueye is right here as well. Decidueye loves the extra attack from this build, and it's already so squishy. I mean, how much HP can you really give that thing? This one might surprise you. Absol is actually recommended to take this build over critical hits. Given that you can only get so much critical hit, and this just gives you more consistent attack, this is recommended for Absol. Honestly, I think you could go with this or the previous setup for Aegislash. I think both will work really, really well. They're quite similar, but this one is a little more focused on damage. And of course, last but not least, the three hatted menace Dodrio does very, very well with the setup you're looking at right here. You want that extra attack. Also, a lot of Dodrios can stack multiple items, so you could stack a cookie and the extra HP is pretty nice as well. For Urshifu, you could go with a setup like this with a little extra attack or the previous sort of brawler fighter assortment for a little extra HP. I could actually see an argument for either one, really. It just depends on how you like your Urshifu. What flavor of Urshifu is best for you? Before we move on and look at some specific character builds here, you can also take a look at a setup like this. This one is a little less focused on the HP you get, but you are more focused on the attack and you get a little extra critical hit. So this could be something that you want if you just want to get a little more fortunate with some of your crits on some of your attack-based Pokemon, like your long-range Pokemon, your Cinderaces and things like that. This could be a nice setup. While you don't get as much HP, you're still only tanking your special attack stat and you get a little extra chance to have some big pops of damage. Now let's take a look at a variant that works pretty well for a few Pokemon. One is Talonflame, another is Zeraora. There are a few Pokemon that are sort of attack based that you could lean into the cooldown factor of them. At the same time you're doing this, you're probably gonna wanna run something like an Energy Amp, just so you sort of complete the idea of this build leaning into the extra cooldown. This just helps you get moves like Fly off faster, your Unite move come back quicker, and things like Discharge on Zeraora. People have also run builds very similar to this for Pokemon like Urshifu. I've run something like this for a Pokemon like Leafeon. I think the most important thing when looking at a setup like this is just understanding what you're going for. This gives you a little less damage than you get with some of your other setups, but you are more reliant on your cooldown. So if you're playing something like Dodrio and you wanna have the most uptime possible on some of your moves, you're running an energy amp or something like that with your drill pack build, you could run something like this. And now you may be wondering, hey Jake, why the silver Arbok? Mind your own business. No, 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 I'll tell you, I'll tell you. This Arbok right here gives you negative four special defense and only 1.6 attack rather than two attack from the gold version, but 1.6 rounds up inside the game. So you actually lose a little less special defense and you get the same amount of attack. The more you know. Now let's move on to some of our special attackers here in Pokemon Unite. What you're looking at right now is a great setup for a lot of your tanky special attackers. You can see six green, six white, so extra HP, and then leaning into your special attack. You get a little extra cooldown as well. Obviously, when you're looking at a build like this, we're only talking about a 1% move cooldown reduction, but if it can get in there and it doesn't hurt anything, there's no reason not to. You get 350 HP, you tank your attack stat, but these are special attack based Pokemon. You get a little extra special attack and a little extra move speed. Again, a lot of tanky Pokemon are going to love this setup. Tanky Pokemon like Blastoise. Blastoise does really, really well with this setup. You could lean into more special attack and cooldown, but Blastoise is such a tanky Pokemon that it feels criminal not to take advantage of the extra HP. Comfey, interestingly enough, does very, very well with this setup. Comfey has a few things that are based off of its max HP, so this gives you a little extra HP without having to do too much. You also, of course, could run some cooldown on Comfey, but either one works, and this is what the math recommends. 
Of course, Gudra, the tanky gooey boy does very, very well with extra tankiness and extra special attack. Lapras does extremely well with this setup. Also, we have actually a build we'll talk about a little bit later for Lapras, but Lapras does really well with this, of course. Mr. Mime, more like Mr. Crime, it does well with this build. I don't know what I was gonna say, but that's all I got. Slowbro, are you surprised? You shouldn't be. I mean, what else do you want with Slowbro except for tankiness and some extra damage? And this gives you everything you want and everything you need for Slowbro. Here's one you might not expect. Sylveon does very well here. Being one of the attackers with the highest HP pool or one of the highest HP pools inside the game, Sylveon does very, very well with a setup like this. And of course, the Pokemon that's always tough and always wiggly. Mr. Crime, no, I mean wiggly tough. Wiggly tough does very well well with this setup also. As you can see here, a lot of this setup is based around having these green, white Pokemon right here. Butterfree, Jumpluff, Lugia. Very important for a setup like this. And then all of these are lowering your attack stat here as much as you can while raising other stats that are much more important or just being part of this setup. You could also see a negative crit rate on this build right here. Obviously, the, none of these Pokemon are focused on getting any critical hits. Now we're going to move on to our special attackers that are looking to deal a little more damage and use their moves a little more frequently. We have right here the six green, seven black for all the cool kids out there. This is the build that I feel like became popular right once Boost Emblems came out, but we have a few changes. Most notably, we have Lugia inside here that pairs with Butterfree, so you get two white on this build right now, but this gives you extra HP, a little extra special attack. You lose some critical hit, which really none of these Pokemon are looking to do. So you lose almost nothing with this and you gain everything that these Pokemon are interested in. Special attackers that would love this. We'll start with the surprising one, but Blissey. Blissey does very well with this because you could, of course, lean into the HP, which wouldn't be bad, but the cooldowns are very nice for a Pokemon like that. Clefable, also another Pokemon that you really want to get your moves back up fast enough, and this will help you do that. Shandy Lore does very, very well with this build. Ah, Shandy, just using your moves and doing damage. <laughs> you silly candle. Cramorant does very well with a setup like this, obviously. It's another special attacker that loves getting its moves back faster. Delphox is a great example of another Pokemon that does very, very well with a setup like this. You can play a setup like this on Eldegoss. Eldegoss actually does very well here, and we have a specific Eldegoss setup we will talk about a little later. In fact, we have some fun variants coming up for a lot of Pokemon. Espeon, of course, does well with a setup like this. Extra special attack, extra cooldown, win, win. Gardevoir, would you have expected anything else? Maybe Mr. Crime? I hope you're not just jumping to the Gardevoir section here, or that bit will fall extremely flat, as if it already wasn't bad enough. Gengar doesn't have a lot of other great options. This is a very solid option for a Pokemon that wants to do some more damage and get its moves back fast. Mew. Mew does well with <laughs> Mew does well with this as well. Mew does. And while we're here, I might as well mention that we don't know exactly what Mewtwo Y is going to look like, but we can assume that Mewtwo Y will take a setup like this, maybe something closer to the tank setup, but Mewtwo Y is going to do a lot of damage from afar. It also has some natural critical hit, so we might see a slightly different setup for it, but I could assume Mewtwo Y will run something like this. Inteleon does very well with a setup like this, and I know what you're thinking, but it does have negative critical hit. I recognize that, and for some Pokemon that might be an issue, but Inteleon's crits are essentially guaranteed if you're playing this Pokemon correctly, so you don't need to stress too much about this stat. However, you could move a couple things around if you were worried about that. Blizzard, Avalanche, Alolan, Ninetales also works very, very well with a setup like this. We can talk about Dazzling Gleam in a minute. Put your hand down. We'll talk about it in a minute, Barry. If your name Barry, let me know in the comments. Pika Pika Pikachu does great with a setup like this. And Venusaur. Cooldown, special attack. Who could ask for anything Venus more? Now, while we're here, this is just me messing around a little bit. But if you wanted to lean into getting a little extra critical hit on something like Mewtwo Y or even Inteleon, you could run a setup like this. You still get six green, seven black, two white. You do lose some stats that aren't as ideal, but you get a little extra 
critical hit from the Scyther and the Pinsir and the Sneasel right there. Or excuse me. No, it is Sneasel. I was going to say Weevil. What am I talking about here? So you do get a little extra critical hit. I don't know if you would necessarily run this. Mewtwo Y might use something like this just because all of its autos could critically hit. Now let's talk a little bit about a special attack variant that I absolutely love. This is six green, two white, seven black, two purple. And this is focused on move speed for your special attackers. You actually get a huge chunk of move speed right here. As you can see, 175 move speed you're still tanking critical hit rate, a little bit of defense and some attack. You don't get as much HP with this setup, but this works pretty well for Pokemon that have a hard time maneuvering around a battlefield, something like a, you know, a caster mage, like Hurricane Cramorant or something like that. And it also works really well for Pokemon like Lapras who need to move in and out with something like Parish Song and stick to their enemies. I have to be honest with most of my special attackers, I've been playing them for a while now with this extra extra boost to move speed and I love it. A Pokemon we have not talked about yet is Hoopa. This is a variant for Hoopa using seven red for white. You still get a ton of extra HP and you lose some attack and very minor defense changes right here. But this is focused on your attack speed early with this Pokemon. Another Pokemon that does very well with this is Eldegoss. Both Hoopa and Eldegoss perform extremely well early inside of lane with a ton of extra attack speed just ruining your day for your opponents. Also, if you're playing Aurora Veil Nine Tails, you could run something like this for extra attack speed. This variant's really set up only for a few Pokemon. Red emblems are one of the trickier emblem sets in the game because they sound so good, but they are so extremely specific. Glaceon's one of the weirder Pokemon, and this is a setup that can work for really any Glaceon build. However, we have a specific one for Icicle Spear. This is lowering critical hit only slightly, not really enough to make a huge difference whether you're running Icy Wind or you're playing the Icicle Spear build for Glaceon. This could work for either variant. What you're looking at right here is a specific Math Chord build for Icicle Spear, basically focusing on its viability after level 11. So you do sacrifice a little bit of the cooldown that you would like at different points in the game, but you get extra HP, extra special attack. So this is leaning heavier into that for sort of a late game carry Icicle Spear Glaceon. Now we're looking at one of my favorite variants in the game. Look, I love seven yellow emblems in general. I just think the move speed is so incredibly fun. And this is for Inteleon. Inteleon is a really weird Pokemon because when it slows down near edges of things to charge some of its critical hit counters, it can be a little frustrating. But this kind of takes that away because you have this extra out of combat move speed. And also using this, you can invade the enemy central area, not even necessarily at the start of the map, but just at different points in the early game with one of the best secure tools, if not the best secure tool in the entire game, being that early water gun from Inteleon. So right here, you do get a little extra special attack. You get a lot of extra move speed, a little extra HP, and the critical hit that you're losing here is not really relevant. I'm telling you, your critical counters are everything for Inteleon. You don't need to worry about a little ding to your critical hit. I absolutely love this build. I love it. Here's a fun variant that I absolutely love for Gudra. This is either if you're running one attack speed item or none, you can get an extra break point in your attack speed with Gudra if you have five red. So this is four green, five red, six white for Gudra. Very, very specific. And the math cord wants me to let you know it's highly experimental. So don't blame them or me if it goes wrong. Let's talk about some emblems that just don't seem to have a place inside of Pokemon Unite right now. And those would be pink emblems. Pink emblems are a very weird one inside the game. This is just a silly setup I threw together with pink real quick for fun. And this situation with pink is interesting because it sounds good. You reduce the hindrance effect duration that your Pokemon receives, but it's really hard to quantify whether or not this 16% reduction is really helping you that much, especially when other builds can just give you so much more HP or defense or so much more attack into the stat that's important for you, either attack or special attack. Right now, pink emblems just don't really seem to have a place inside of Unite, unfortunately. They actually might need some sort of buff so you could actually really feel the difference that these emblems are making. 
Another grouping of emblems that's just odd right now is gray. We don't have enough gray to make a full set, and even if we did, I don't know if it would be that powerful. What this does is it reduces damage from every hit you take by a set amount. Interestingly enough, there is a version of the game, I think it might be in Spanish, where it actually says percent reduction, which sounds amazing, like 6% reduction on all, all hits, but that is not what it is. It is a flat six damage reduced before defenses are calculated. So it's just kind of a mess. And unfortunately, even with seven gray, I don't know that you could actually recommend using something like this, but right now gray is just meh. Navy is also in this boat. I think this build could be kind of cool. I mean, getting your ult a little bit faster, your Unite move would be really, really nice. But at the same time, we don't even have five currently and we need seven to get the full, you know, charge rate decrease. I mean, maybe on a Pokemon like Leafeon, you just love the extra charge rate. You'd be running around like an absolute maniac even more than before. But right now, Navy is just not in a good spot inside the game. Let's talk about a build that first off you can't make anymore and let's talk about defenses inside Pokemon Unite. You can no longer make the 666 build which was 6 blue, 6 white, 6 purple and now we can talk a little bit about defenses. You can't make the build anymore by the way because Lugia changed its color. It is now white green. The thing about defenses inside Pokemon Unite is they are often not as useful as just flat amounts of HP. Not only do opponents have lots of ways to reduce your defenses before damage comes in or they have some form of true damage. There's just lots of ways to negate defenses already. HP protects you from any amount of damage that comes in. If you want to learn more about defenses, I implore you to write your local congressperson. They are working day and night. No, over on Unite DB, there is actually a section where you can learn about some of the hidden mechanics inside the game. I highly recommend you check it out and you'll start to understand more and more why defenses are not as prioritized as something like HP. When you're going through your emblem setups, you could come up with a lot of different creations that might not be 100% perfect, but provide a ton of value. For instance, look at a setup like this, where you get 500 extra HP, six white, you get a little extra attack while tanking some special attack, and you get four blue. This is definitely set up for that all, you know, up in the enemy's face, tanky attack based Pokemon. A setup like this could be really nice. It's not something that the math cord recommends, but I wanted to show you that even though there are recommended builds, there are still things that are sort of outside of that recommended section that are very, very good. And if you understand what you're looking for in your builds, which is getting rid of stats you don't use and focusing on stats you do, you will be in good shape. Now I know in Pokemon Unite, you only have room for three emblem sets. So I'm going to show you the three emblem sets that you could use if you didn't want to purchase any more and you just wanted three sets that essentially work for every Pokemon in the game. Set number one, of course, is that special attacker build. Six green, two white, seven black. Works for basically every special attacker inside the game, outside of a few tanks, but in general, this works great for those Pokemon. Your next setup would be a variation of the six white, six brown. Really set up for every attack based Pokemon in the game. If you had something that looked kind of like this, every Pokemon that is based around attack would be doing just fine. And then finally, for your special attackers that are very tanky, you know, your Laprases, your Slow Bros, things like that, you would lean more into the six green, six white setup. So if you only had three and you didn't want any more and you didn't want to mess with it, these are three great options for you right now. So there you have it, all of the emblem setups recommended by the Unite Math Court and a few that I threw in there that hopefully they don't get mad at me for. These are the best emblem setups inside of Pokemon Unite right now. I hope I taught you a little bit about how you would like to build them, what you would like to focus on, and what you would like to avoid with your emblem setups. Let me know what you think I missed down in the comments, and if this is helpful, of course, please share this around. I would love for the Pokemon Unite community to see videos like this so they know what they are bringing into matches and how it can help them win games. Thank you all. Yeehaw to you and yours. I love you. Huge shout out to Unite DB and the Math Gord and specifically Evo. I love you, Evo. Thanks for all your help. All right, let's do this thing. We sealed it with a kiss.